Hey everyone, I'm Soul, and this video is going to be controversial, but I feel that it needs to be done. Someone needs to make a guide towards all this stuff because right now this information is being suppressed. Is there a diet that was intended for man? Was man intended to be a beast or a spiritual being? This is not a recommendation. I'm not offering medical advice. Do your own research. In order to experience this video correctly, you first have to address the effect of cosmology. We have the religious and the atheist. Then we have the people in the middle. This group is vast. You have the people who are not necessarily religious or atheist, but they believe in the paranormal or the fantastic. Then you have the classic, I'm agnostic person, meaning I'm okay with just not knowing. Most of the agnostic types are really atheists. This is because they literally believe in the theory of evolution and they don't realize it. They have constructed a viewpoint of the world based on a theory, which is that we came from randomness. We had to fight to survive. Science won't touch the subject between connection of mind and reality. This is something that is hidden right in front of our faces. In the past, there were mystery schools dedicated to proving this knowledge of mind over matter to the initiate. One would be put to the ultimate test through strange rituals, meditation, and self-deprivation. In the ancient world, this information was guarded with the utmost secrecy. There was a civilization not too long ago that was truly spiritual and understood this connection. Mainstream religions are lost in distorted and warped scripture that keeps them imprisoned in the material realm. They happily give themselves to the demon god Baal. This message needs to be taken from the mindset that the world is magical, that the idea that the world revolves around us and that we are special, that there are forces at play to keep us safe and to guide us through the experience of life. Were we designed originally to eat a certain way? Let's get started at the beginning. The original Adam, which in the canonical King James Bible, there is only one version of Adam, but in fact, there are more than one. Man has gone through different stages, the first being fully ethereal or astral. We were light beings that were sustained by our own energy, created from the Son of God. We were true sons of God and we did not mate, we were androgynous. We reproduce through a process of budding. Let me just stop there. I want to have an effect on the materialist mindset as well, not just one who's willing to believe in all possibilities. These ideas have been passed on from long ago and still exist today. Many philosophers talk about these ideas and it's well known in occult circles. The materialist is someone who views the world from an evolution point of view. They have forgotten that the world is magical. Lost in the pleasures of the material world, and they don't understand the concepts of nature. It's a logical fallacy. Well, I disagree. When we speak of nature, we speak of it from an esoteric point of view. Long ago, the ancients realized that there were invisible forces that would dictate physical events. This is the origin of astrology and Kabbalah. It's the Gnostic idea that the breath of life that we have is the mother or the spirit, that there is an all-knowing God within each and every one of us. Our consciousness is an experience of the father and the mother. These two figures are monumental in how we experience the world. The father being the active principle and the mother being the bearer or the one who nurtures. We are constantly being supported by her, but many ignore her. If you still think it's a fallacy, then explain how consciousness came to be. You can't from the view of mainstream science and evolution. By speaking to the mind who can't easily accept information that isn't mainstream, you must choose. Are you a physical being that came from apes? Or are you a spiritual being that has slowly de-evolved? It's the argument of duality. Are you a bag of meat, or are you a spirit experiencing a physical body? One must realize the depth of this philosophy, as it's nothing new and is in fact the most guarded secret of the esoteric societies, ancient and modern. We begin with mind. You can't create a mind physically through randomness. It's not simply a computer, but a universe within a universe. A reflection of a reflection. You can even prove this to yourself, never with sarcasm, but if one became serious about developing the powers of self-discipline and train their mind to see occult forces, then these matters wouldn't be so hard to understand for the average person. It takes years to develop occult powers, and this is only for the serious student who has a purpose. Not enough just to say, okay, I'm gonna go prove that my mind has power over reality. I want a new car. 
Oh wait, no car? This is stupid. People don't understand how much belief has a play in things. It's honestly a shame. Therefore, if there exists a spiritual reality, one that we originally came from and have slowly de-evolved into a material state, I would argue that nature is the process of coming back into alignment with that first state of everlasting life and away from death. If that made no sense, then it's because the occult is not understood by the logical mindset. This is an issue because we have people who truly want us to be healthy, but have no understanding of the spiritual side of man. The diets of man. There are many vegan channels that are trying to tell you that they know what the best diet is and that it's healthy. Same goes for the raw meat people. The complete opposite trying to say that it's the only way to get the necessary nutrients. Let's start with vegans. I've been vegan for four years or so on and off and I've watched all the main YouTubers and I can break this down and explain why it's unhealthy. Especially how it's advertised and marketed today. Here's the first issue. They try to look at the diet from such a scientific point of view. They use the same standard of protein that is issued for meat and try to fill themselves up with as much protein from plants as possible. I know not all vegans eat primarily soy, but come on. This is the problem. These vegan channels don't understand that soy is toxic. That cooking with oils and eating all this protein is making our bodies extremely acidic. I'm not even entering this argument from the standpoint that vegans don't get enough nutrients. On the contrary, I'm saying that they're eating too much garbage that is not good for them and they also do not have a connection with spirit or nature. It's usually mostly ethical. They also for some reason are perfectly fine with cane sugar, which is a no-no. Vegans try to calculate everything and are even willing to supplement all these different vitamins that they need. Look, I'm for the ethical reasons, but eating soy almost every day and eating peanut butter and a high grain diet is not necessarily healthy, and the main reason is that it's not easily digested by us. Most of these vegan channels are trying to teach people how they can get big and buff and healthy on the vegan diet, and it's not really healthy. Too much protein is acidic for the body. Without proper knowledge of digestion and cleansing, the body will rot from the inside out. Our modern society feeds itself constantly, whether vegan or carnivore, way too much. And we accept it because we have to have a certain amount of calories each day or we will die from hunger and get sick. Most who eat this way have no clue what is going inside their intestines. How do you think food gets through you? Just magically? Our livers produce the enzymes and it just all just goes through our intestines nice and clean? It has to go through a very long system. And no, we do not produce enough enzymes ourselves. Most of our kidneys and our complete endocrine system has been completely shut down. We don't even realize that we're not filtering out the toxins in our body. Over time, this shuts down the feeling of senses in the intestines and you no longer feel that you're rotting. What do you think a bloated belly is? Well that's BS, where's your proof? If you're one of those guys, then, you know, I can't really break this all down in one video, but basically the medical industry is a business, the pharmaceutical companies are not in it for your best interest, it's all about the money customers, drug dealers that spend 80k in four years in school. I mean, come on, we can all agree that doctors do not heal anything, they just patch things up. Don't get me wrong, emergency situations and in accidents, they've established how to control the situation and get it under control. But when we're talking about ongoing illness and premature aging and disease, which isn't really anything, it's a theory that you can divide the different issues of the body into their own category and solve them from that perspective. All diseases usually have the same underlying cause. The issue is auto-intoxication. Proteins putrefy and rot in the body. Same goes for fats and oils. They just turn rancid in your body. This isn't hard. You have the acid side and then the alkaline side of the chemistry. You're most likely extremely acidic if this is your first time hearing this information. And no, this isn't BS. You have to have the eyes to see what is life and what is death. It will all make sense soon. Your fecal matter can poison you. It infects and rots tissue, degenerates our bowels, and can cause polyps, fissures, tumors, and even cancer. Quote, Could auto-intoxication or self-poisoning be a major player in the high amount of disease in this country? One prolific health writer penned a hundred years ago, the impurities of the body, if not allowed to escape, are taken back into the blood and forced upon the internal organs. Nature makes an effort to free the system, and the effort produces fever and what is termed disease. 
this is nothing new. And even Dr. John Harvey Kellogg said a century ago, 90% of diseases are due to improper functioning of the colon. One of the first things to do to get rid of any so-called disease is to get rid of toxemia, for it is the state of blood that makes disease possible. Disease is a crisis of toxemia, which means that toxin has accumulated in the blood about the toleration point. In the crisis, the so-called disease, called a cold, flu, pneumonia, headache, or typhoid fever, is a vicarious elimination. Nature is endeavoring to rid the body of toxins. Any treatment that obstructs this effort at elimination baffles nature in her effort at self-curing. J.H. Tilden, Toxemia Explained, 1926. Oh, but nature's a logical fallacy. See, these mainstream vegans can't even understand. The body possesses its own natural healing mechanism. So much so, that some of them even recommend taking antibiotics. Quote, If the colon is not working properly, toxins must exit the body through other routes. The kidneys, the skin, the breath. Many of these patients have bad halitosis, body odor, etc. When a person becomes ill from colon disease, he or she may develop a variety of symptoms, including headaches, muscle aches, fatigue, autoimmune diseases like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, cancer, or cardiovascular disease. Dr. Bernard Jensen made the following statement. In the 50 years I've spent helping people to overcome illness, disability, and disease, it has become crystal clear that poor bowel management lies at the root of most people's health problems. In his book, Tissue Cleansing Through Bowel Management, Dr. Jensen discusses mucoid plaque. He writes, the heavy mucus coating in the colon thickens and becomes a host of putrefaction. The blood capillaries to the colon begin to pick up the toxins, poisons, and noxious debris as it seeps through the bowel wall. All tissues and organs of the body are now taking on these toxic substances. Here is the beginning of true auto-intoxication on a physiological level. On page 27, he reveals his experience in the matter. One autopsy revealed a colon to be 9 inches in diameter with a passage through it no larger than a pencil. The rest was caked up layer upon layer of encrusted fecal matter. This accumulation can have the consistency of truck tire rubber. It's that hard and black. Another autopsy revealed a stagnant colon to weigh in at an incredible 40 pounds. Imagine carrying all that morbid accumulated, accumulated waste. The late Elvis Presley and John Wayne had toxic colons in excess of 40 pounds each. The FDA admits that the average American male can be carrying 5 to 22 pounds of feces on a given day. This is even worse with meat eaters. Our stomach is not designed to digest meat, first off, and any health benefits experienced on this diet are purely temporary from high fat. This diet is not a diet of nature. You could say, well, what about animals? We aren't beasts. We have fallen into a lower state of being. And I'm trying to explain a very deep spiritual reality that has been lost to humanity. Because we have lost the ability to credit the mother, the watcher, and the supporter of our mind and body. We don't realize what consciousness is. And so don't realize that from within this light is our true self. A godlike being that needs not any other living creature to survive. Meat eaters are vampires. They require the life force of another being to continue their existence. Our whole society has become vampires, even vegans. They just eat fake meat, so they symbolically are eating the blood. The entire thing is a joke, and it's a shame that humanity has lost itself so far. I can tell you how we got into eating meat, and it wasn't evolution or nature. It comes from cannibalism and religion. There was a time where nature actually fed us. There was no need for us to grow or farm. We just ate the fruit-bearing seed. And then we have the famous Genesis quote, And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, which is the fruit of a tree-yielding seed. To you, it shall be for meat. Notice how he mentions how man has dominion over the animals, but he does not say that they are for meat. No, he says, every herb-bearing seed, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree-yielding seed. To you, it shall be for meat. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. But for those of you who reject Bible, I'm just going to make it clear now that I'm not a Christian, but these scriptures are from a very ancient source. 
Yes, they've been distorted, but these ideas are ancient in nature, and I will show you as we go that what I'm presenting is nothing new. So, we have the protein myth. There's this whole concept in the mainstream that you need a certain amount of protein or nutrients in order to stay healthy, and while this is true, it's not true in the way it's practiced. We are overeating. If we need a protein to be big and strong, then why do cattle, horses, and gorillas get so big and strong? It's not true. And we have to get out of this mindset that science has our best interest, or, you know, science isn't science anymore, it's just propaganda. Most of us know this. We know that we're being lied to by the media companies, education system, pharmaceutical companies, and it's pretty obvious that it's not the government's main interest to produce the god within man. For this mental mindset would be dangerous if carried by many. Not only is it too much protein, but your body is most likely not absorbing and breaking down the amino acids. If your body was cleansed and not filled with toxic rotting waste, and you practice a light diet of living foods, then you would absorb all the protein you need from fruits, herbs, nuts, seeds, and vegetables. There are many raw fooders who talk about this power that comes from raw foods, that it makes you high, that in this state you can build real muscle more dense and lean rather than this inflated acidic muscle. You're also very alkaline in this raw state. This must have an effect on the power of building muscle because the blood becomes electric. Your etheric and astral energies begin to become more prominent to your senses. Material reality is an illusion, and mind or the mind of God is limited and not functioning properly in the majority of most humans. Not that they're not intelligent, but the mind is cut off from these spiritual realities. They have fully invested their spirit into the material realm, and in doing so, they become a parasite. As the material realm is parasitic in nature, it feeds off the energy of spirit to survive, as above, so below. If you're interested in the occult Gnostic perspective of the world, we have a couple videos on the channel. It's a pretty deep topic and can be especially confusing to the mind first entering these types of subjects. But in the infinite chaos existed a higher being named Sophia. Now the best way to think about this is literally, at first, and then try to think about it from an archetypal or symbolical point of view after. She created a universe within herself, within her womb, and nurtured a reality. And out of this reality, she gave birth to demonic beings, or archons. These archons are the planets of ancient mythology. Out of these demonic beings, one of the beings shouted, I am, and in that moment became God. All the other archons, or demons, followed him. This god became ruler, as what we know as Saturn, or the god of the Old Testament. He created the material realm, Saturn, god of death. The material realm is a product of these archetypal beings manifesting into the physical reality, the fallen ones. This is what our bodies are. And that might be where I lose you, but check out my video on the Nephilim and it will explain more. Okay, so there was a time, not too long ago, after we fell into the current material state, that there was a golden age. This golden age is what we call Atlantis, but it's also getting mixed up with what is known as Tartaria, the confusion being the dating. We think Atlantis is a long time ago, right? Like 10,000, 20,000 years ago. The Atlanteans are the Hyperboreans of Greek myth. Hellenicus claims that the Hyperboreans, Celts, were a very just people living on acorns and fruit, and no partaking of meat. Herodotus tells us that the Egyptians subsisted on fruits and vegetables, which they ate raw. Plinius confirms this statement from the Rig Veda. One who partakes of human flesh, flesh of a horse or another animal, and deprives others of milk by slaughtering cows, O king, if such a fiend does not desist by other means, then you should not hesitate to cut off his head. The oldest inhabitants of Greece, the Pelasgians, who came before the Dorian, Ionian, and Elian migrations, inhabited Arcadia and Thessaly possessing the islands of Lesbos and Lake Manus, which were full of orange groves. The people with their diet of dates and orange, oranges lived on average of more than 200 years. Another Greek poet, Hesiod, said, The Pelasgians and the people who came after them in Greece ate fruits of the virgin forest and blackberries from the field. Plutarch, the Greek biographer, observed, The ancient Greeks before the time of Lycurgus ate nothing but fruits. They didn't eat like we do today and they had a much longer lifespan. This is because they understood the body and mind. Atlantis was not a technologically advanced society like you see in sci-fi movies. It was advanced spiritually. 
we were connected with the Godhead here in the material realm. And that didn't make the parasitic archons who created this realm too happy. This civilization is the same civilization that created most of our cities. Like LA, New York, Paris, you name it. We see the same architecture from around the world, and most of it is started from an antediluvian base. The Essene Way of Life The Essenes were a spiritual community of people who saved these ancient traditions from Hyperborea. Many famous biblical characters like Jesus, Mary, Joseph, John the Baptist were Essenes. The Essenes were alchemists and had powers of clairvoyance, which allowed them to speak to angels and see nature spirits. Alright, so what I'm about to share is pretty mind-blowing if all this is new to you, but basically there's a gospel called the Essene Gospel of Peace, which was translated from an ancient Dead Sea scroll that was locked up in the Vatican. And in this gospel, the sick come to Jesus and ask him for assistance. Jesus basically tells them that they can't see nature and that they need to come back to the mother. He tells them that they need to start fasting and to start performing enemas. And one of the guys becomes too sick from fasting. So the others beg Jesus to cure him. So Jesus milks a goat, he blesses the milk, with um, all the different angels for each element. And then this guy like passes out and then out of his mouth comes a worm the size of his body. So Jesus pulls it out and crushes it with a rock. And he's like pointing to it and he's like, see, this is what's been sitting inside of your guy's body. Um, so the guy who was suffering finally was cured from his pain and um, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down in, um, in a second, but hang on there. This is super interesting stuff. You're gonna find it interesting. So the Essenes are mentioned in history by Josephus, Philo, and Pliny, all having one thing in common: the Essenes' origins are lost in prehistory. I tend to think that what Josephus wrote on them is slight misinformation, as he says the Essenes married, and Pliny says the Essenes never marry. Josephus says that the Essenes are found in every city, but Pliny locates them on the western coast of the Dead Sea. Quote, On the west side of the Dead Sea, but out of range of the noxious exhalations of the coast, is the solitary tribe of the Essenes, which is remarkable beyond all other tribes of the whole world, as it has no women, and has renounced all sexual desire, as has no money, and it has only palm trees for company. Day by day, the throng of refugees is recruited to an equal number by numerous accessions of persons tired of life and driven there by the ways of fortune to adopt their manners. Thus, through thousands of ages, incredible to relate, a race in which no one is born lives on forever. So prolific for their advantage is other men's weariness of life. So, if you guys haven't seen that video on Conspiracy RS's channel on waste management, you gotta see it. It's completely relative, and I think it explains a lot. So, okay, so this is what I'd like to put forth. In the Golden Age, we had a diet that did not create hazardous waste. Like literally, we probably did not have to poop. Sounds crazy, but his video goes over how our sewer systems aren't designed for waste, and it doesn't really make sense that they would build these cities and not prepare for such an important factor. When you have millions of people that poop, why would you build a city that doesn't take waste management into consideration? It doesn't really make sense. And the reason is, is that we are in a deep state of amnesia. We found these cities after a great cataclysm. We fell into cannibalism and needed to feed like beasts in order to survive after the confusion. Before, we had symbiosis with nature. Magic was possible. We ate off the fruits of giant trees and there were plenty of herbs for meat. This increased our vibrational frequency and allowed us not only to live longer, but it made us more intelligent. It makes sense if you really just think about it, you know? The society that created all these great monuments of the world must have had a passion for the development of the human mind, as is reflected by how they built their cities. As within, so without. Now, this sounds great and all, right? But I'm going to try to be practical so that I can help those who are resistant to this type of information. Here are some typical things that meat eaters say. You aren't getting enough protein. Raw meat is the only way that you're going to get the nutrients you need. Most of this is BS. First off, I already gave an example of other animals getting big and strong without protein, but furthermore, 
Carnivores are not taking into consideration digestion. Sure, the high fat probably helps with some ailments that you may have with dysfunctioning organs, but overall, the carnivore diet is putting your body into ketosis and then stacking toxins on top of toxins. There are only two sides of chemistry, it's either acidic or alkaline. When you're eating a high fat protein diet, that leads to acidosis. This is chemistry, our body has to process all of this, and the typical explanation for why we don't need to cleanse our body is, oh, we have a liver. Yeah, you have a liver that's been whipped your entire life with toxic processed foods that your parents fed you. And then sure, maybe you're someone who decided to try a diet trend to get healthy, but let me tell you, carnivore and keto diets are the worst diets to ever be thought of for the human race. You're basically putting your body into a critical state, while at the same time your intestines are filled with rotting meat. There's no proof for this whatsoever. Um, no, there, there's proof. There's proof. You should begin your research. They've known about mucoid plaque for a long time now. They pulled out 50 pounds of waste out of Elvis Presley. Dr. Hiromi Shinya, who gave his patients a specific light diet with alkaline, magnetized water to help clean out the colon, saw a great improvement in their health as their colon became more clean. He too came to the conclusion that our modern lifestyle of eating mostly protein was leading to ill health. This waste is then sitting in your body and creates an environment for parasites. Someone commented that these parasites are actually beneficial for us. No, tapeworms and other serpent-like beings living inside of your intestines, heart and brain, and then ma manipulating your thoughts to eat like they want you to eat is not beneficial. Look, it can be hard to admit these things. If this information stresses you out or irritates you, it's maybe because these microorganisms that live in your body realize that cutting them off from this acidic protein source and switching to a more alkaline source will make it impossible for them to live there. Many people who believe in aliens believe that aliens would change the atmosphere of the earth in order to make the atmosphere more comfortable for them. If you're eating raw meat of any kind, you have parasites. Even cooking doesn't really kill all the parasites. This is why raw meat is not the solution. It isn't sustainable, you have to kill other precious life forms to survive, and you're a vampire, a parasitic being. You live in death, and the force formerly known as Satan has taken over your mind. It's pretty easy. You must choose either life or death. Duality exists in every aspect of our lives. That's the main problem with vegans and carnivores. They have succumbed to death and the god of the material realm. They don't understand life and the angels of the mother, for all is balanced between the four elements, and we have been entirely engrossed with the material aspect. When you eat cooked foods, you're eating death. There's no life in food. There's no energy or light. The water of the mother has been dried and evaporated, and the food is void of the breath of life. When you eat from a tree, that fruit is designed for you. It nurtures you. It heals you. The same is for all medicinal herbs. How is it that plants can create chemicals that are completely designed to heal specific problems that arise within the living beings of Mother Earth? Most of our pharmaceuticals come from plants, which truly shows that we can't even compete when it comes with Mother Nature. Nothing knows what is right for the body than her, but we assume that somehow science has figured out the body. They are far from it. Allopathic medicine is truly the dark age for healing, as we have been so preciously supported by nature, but too blind to see it. Nuts and seeds from the tree of life, and if they have not been roasted or boiled, then they contain the angels of life. Try cooking your seeds in oil and then planting them. Nothing will grow. Milk is not bad, for all living things must be nurtured by the breast of the mother when they are born. We have been supplied with many beautiful creatures that supply a bounty full of milk and that we protect and nurture them in exchange. Holy bread must be made in the sun. Bread made from the light of the sun that has not risen from yeast. Flatbread. Bacteria is a network. The only way to come in terms with your parasites and bacteria is to first rid yourself of Satan. Remove the evil beings that live within you. After this, the angels will protect you, but your bodies rely on microorganisms to survive angels. Therefore, there must be a balance with these microorganisms. You must get your bacteria from nature, from the river blessed by the sun, and by the fruits and animals that you nurture. I don't expect anybody to be able to act on this immediately, and 
I'm not even really recommending anything. Do your own research. Most of this is not practical for the average American, but does that mean that the way we eat is right? Does it mean that we can eat from sources that have been cooked and soaked in oil? Does it mean we can eat three times a day without ever having to think about cleansing? No. And it was the same for Jesus. Back in his time, which in mainstream history is 2,000 years ago, but from our research is more 500 years ago. In his time, everyone had fallen into sin, and it was no different. The Seeing Gospel of Peace is one of the most influential books I've ever read. It really did change my life, and um, I feel inclined to share it, and I hope it assists you in your journey. In order to want to dive deep into health, you need a motivating factor. For me, at first, I noticed that I was losing my hair, so it motivated me to look into how I can be as healthy as I can be. I didn't want to lose my hair when I was in my 30s, so I knew in my heart that I needed to fix this issue now. Hair is a sign of your health, and if you're prematurely graying or balding, it's not genetics, it's most likely due to acidosis, meaning you have toxins in your lymphatic system that are not being released properly. There are so many people that are getting signs that their lifestyle is unhealthy, like balding, bad digestion, bad breath, bloating, obesity, skin inflammation, but most people ignore it or they think that they're just cursed. I will straight up see grandparents having a full meal of five guys, and I'm sorry, just something about that doesn't seem right. If I was older and taking any prescriptions, I'd make it my priority to heal myself so that I can live as long as possible. But it's as if we've completely accepted that our lifespan is from 80 to 100. That's the problem. People are like, well, I feel fine. Yeah, you feel fine now, then you hit your 30s and you get your first set of problems, then you turn 40 and this way of life is not livable any longer unless you start to take pills to suppress the problems. Then the last 30 years of your life is just dying and everyone who makes it to 80 and 100 is just lucky. I don't think it's designed to be that way. We are constantly told that the ancients died at a young age, but that's such a lie. We have reference from Greek philosophers of the Hyperboreans, and in the Bible it mentions much longer lifespans for humans. I truly feel the same goes for us, but it requires a balance with nature. So what's your motivating factor? Do you want to have a long lifespan? Did you have a disease in the past? Do you have a health issue? If not, don't wait do you, till you do, because you can still be motivated from a cosmological standpoint. These things begin to click if you let go of the reality that has been fed to us our entire lives. This way of life leads to a mind that is mystical in nature. It transforms your spirit into your true form, releasing your full magical potential and power. Jesus says that your temple must be clean in order to enter the heaven of God. We must all strive to cleanse our sacred body. The seen gospels are scriptures that were left out of the Bible and kept hidden in the Vatican. These scriptures describe a mystical Jesus, in which he informs the sick on how they may heal themselves of all illness. I'm honestly surprised that I didn't know about this book sooner. It seems to me that it's not widely talked about because I really can't find too much information on it. There isn't like a huge video out there breaking this stuff down because for me, this was like the newest rabbit hole. And I don't really mean to say it that way, but usually there's like a subject that I'm learning about that's like the next biggest mind blow. And to be honest, the Essene Gospels has this mystical impact on your consciousness that really makes you question the way you view the world. We all know most of these things. It's honestly super simple to think about, and it makes you realize how convoluted and overanalyzed our thinking is today. It's almost habitual complexity. So a group of sick people seek out Jesus in the woods because they hear that he knows all things and can heal all diseases. They ask, hey, why do we suffer from such sickness? Why can't we be whole like other people? Jesus replies, saying, Happy is it that you hunger for truth. I will satisfy you with the bread of wisdom. Happy are you that you knock, for I will lead you into the kingdom of our mother's angels, where the power of Satan cannot enter. And so the people were obviously confused by Jesus. It was too mystical for them, and they were not understanding who was the mother, but they were optimistic for more information. Jesus begins to speak of the mother, but instead of just thinking of it as Mother Nature, which is one aspect, think about it as this chain of events in which this invisible force, be it the mother or Sophia, is manifesting into this realm. The Essenes were Gnostics and masters of the mystic state. They weren't locked into one state of consciousness. 
This gave them many mental abilities, such as seeing elementals. This is something that one could be pretty confused by when they first start reading this, um, just like the sick were. And Jesus says, Those who receive your mother's angels, and if you do her laws, he who does these things shall never see disease. For the power of our mother is above all, and it destroys Satan and his kingdom, and has rule over all your body and all living things. The blood which runs in us is born of the blood of the earthly mother. The air that we breathe is born of our earthly mother. The hardness of our bones is born of the bones of the earthly mother, of the rocks and of the stones. The tenderness of our flesh is born of the flesh of the earthly mother, whose flesh waxes yellow and red in the fruits of the trees and nurtures us in the furrows of the fields. Our bowers are born of the bowers of the earthly mother and are hid from our eyes like the invisible depths of the earth. I tell you in very truth, man is the son of the earthly mother and from her did the son of man receive his whole body even as the body of the newborn babe is born of the womb of his mother. I tell you truly, you are the one of the earthly mother. She is in you, and you in her. Of her were you born, in her do you live, and into her you shall return again. Keep therefore her laws, for none can live long, neither be happy, but he who honors his earthly mother and does her laws. For your breath is her breath, your blood her blood, your bone her bone, your flesh her flesh, your bowels her bowers, bowels, your eyes and your eyes, her eyes and her ears. I tell you truly, should you fail to keep but one only of these laws, should you harm but only one of all your body's members, you shall be utterly lost in your grievous sickness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I tell you, unless you follow the laws of your mother, you can in no way escape death. And he who clings to the laws of his mother, to him shall his mother cling also. She shall heal all his plagues, and he shall never become sick. She gives him long life and protects him from all afflictions, from fire, from water, from the bite of venomous serpents. For you, your mother bore you, keeping lice within you. She has given you her body, and none but she heals you. Happy is he who loves his mother and lies quietly in her bosom. So there we go. Jesus continues about the mother, which we now call a logical fallacy, or mother nature, but... It's not. There is a natural diet, and he's getting the sick prepared by showing their minds the metaphysical philosophy that the scenes practice, which is our ancient way. The sick fail to realize the basics of reality. What gives our blood life? Why does it rain? Not how, but why? Sure, you can say water cycle, but really this is what supports us. You can't really think this was all some random accident, which is what Jesus is hinting to in a very poetic way. What is air, and why is it supplied so graciously? Breath and animation are the main principles of life. He tells them that your bones are the same as the rocks and stones. We come from nature, and then we fall back into nature. And these things are so basic, but the sick had been lost in their modern age that they couldn't even ask such basic questions of life. Then Jesus says, For I tell you truly, evils and dangers innumerable lie and wait for the sons of men. Beelzebub, the prince of all devils, the source of every evil, lies in wait in the bodies of all sons of men. He is death, the lord of every plague, and taking upon him a pleasing raiment, he tempts and entices the sons of men. Riches does he promise, and power, and splendid palaces, and garments of gold and silver, and a multitude of servants. All these he promises renown, and glory, fornication, and lustfulness, gluttony, and wine bibbing riotous living and slothfulness in idle days, and he entices everyone by that to which their heart is most inclined. And in the day that the sons of men have already become slaves of all these vanities and abominations, then in the payment thereof he snatches from the sons of men all the things which the earthly mother gave them so abundantly. He takes from them their breath, their blood, their bone, their flesh, their bowels, their eyes and their ears, and the breath of the son of man becomes short and stifled full of pain and evil smelling, like the breath of unclean beast, and his, blood becomes, and his blood becomes thick and evil smelling, like the water of swamps, it clots and blackens, like the night of death, and his bone becomes hard and knotted, and melts away within and breaks asunder, as a stone falling down upon a rock, and his flesh waxes fat and watery, it rots and putrefies, with scabs and boils that are an abomination, and his bowels become full with abominable filthiness, with oozing streams of decay, 
and multitudes of abominable, abominable worms have their habitation there. And his eyes grow dim, till dark night enshrouds them, and his ears become stopped, like the silence of the grave. And last of all shall the erring son of man lose life, for he kept not the laws of his mother, and added sin to sin. Therefore are taken from him all the gifts of the earthly mother, breath, blood, bone, flesh, bowels, eyes, and ears, and after all else, life, with which the earthly mother crowned his body. This is what our modern day society is experiencing. That's what disease is. We've become overstimulated by material reality. We've lost touch with not just the concept of the mother nature physically, but metaphysically. We've lost touch with the egoist side of consciousness. So Jesus tells them that all you have to do is the mother's laws, and within the same hour, her angels will be there for you. He says, no man can serve two masters. Either you serve Beelzebub and his devils, or you serve the earthly mother and her angels. Either he serves death, or he serves life. It's the same thing with eating. What are you going to choose? Dead, lifeless food, or the food that is full of life and light? And the sick and confused asked, Well, Jesus, what are these laws of life? We all do the laws of Moses, our lawgiver, even as written in the Holy Scripture. And Jesus answers, Seek not the law in your scriptures, for the law is life, whereas the scripture is dead. I tell you truly, Moses received not his laws from God in writing, but through the living word. And everything that is life is the law written. You find it in the grass, in the tree, in the river, in the mountains, in the birds of heaven, in the fishes of the sea. But seek it chiefly in yourselves. Okay, so notice how he's mentioning that God didn't just write down the laws of Moses. The law is written within life itself. It's actually something very obvious, but we've chosen not to see these things. More so that we're in an age where these simple things are rejected. And he continues, For I tell you truly, God wrote not the laws in the pages of books, but in your heart and your spirit. They are in your breath, your blood, your bone, in your flesh, your bowels, your eyes, your ears, and every little part of your body. They are present in the air, in the water, in the earth, in plants, in the sunbeams. But you shut your eyes that you may not see, and you shut your ears that you may not hear. Jesus continues on like this, but the sick are confused. They respond, well, how may we read the laws of God elsewhere than in the scriptures? Read them to us from there where you see them, for we know nothing else but the scriptures of our forefathers. The sick didn't have the ability to see these simple forces because it requires a different state of consciousness. Two states, death or life, sleep or awakeness. Most of us are in a constant sleep cycle in which we continue the same patterns of death. We don't even realize it's death. So Jesus continues, You don't understand the words of life because you are in death. Darkness darkens your eyes and your ears are stopped with deafness. For I tell you, it profits you not at all that you pour over dead scriptures, if by your deeds you deny him who has given you the scripture. God and his laws are not in which what you do. They are not in gluttony and in wine bibing neither in riotous living, nor in lustfulness, nor in seeking after riches, nor ye in hatred of your enemies. But all these things come from the kingdom of darkness and the lord of all evils. And to all these things do you carry in yourselves, and so the word and the power of God enter not into you, because all manner of evil and all manner of abominations have their dwelling in your body. This goes back to our video on the connection between demons and parasites. That's exactly what he's referring to. But on a deeper level, he's saying that these demons are living on another dimension of your own spirit. So Jesus continues, and basically the way to get rid of all these abominations is fasting and prayer. He also explains to them how to do enemas using a gourd and by entering the stock into your rear. Kind of crazy. Um, and he explains that they need to do this every day of their fast until the water comes out is clear. Now, I don't know if you've done an enema before, and I know most guys would never think about it, but just ask yourself, you really think all the food that you're digesting is coming out? I mean, we're extremely enzyme deficient as a society, and most of us would be shocked to find the bulk of waste that has been built up within our intestines. And Jesus is clearly talking about this stage where all these evil smelling things are coming out of the body. I tell you truly, the angel of water shall cast out your body of all uncleanliness, which defiled it within, without and within, and all unclean and evil-smelling things shall flow out of you, 
and you shall see with your eyes and smell with your nose all the abominations and uncleanliness which defiled the temple of your body. He's telling them that this is why they are in pain, because they are filthy inside, where their eyes see not the occulted. After my fast, just after one week of Jesus fasting, just as Jesus describes, I was getting rid of this black toxic waste and it smelled horrible. And it wasn't just what I ate. I mean, I've been what I thought was healthy for a long time now. I mean, I've been vegan for four years and I was getting rid of this black toxic waste eating just watermelon. Forget about the, ju the juice. This stuff should not be coming out of you if you are eating just fruits, but it's an accumulation of our old lifestyle and decades of being fed processed acidic foods. But if you go through with a detox, you can really clean some stuff out of your body. At the beginning of the detox, you'll poop out whatever the last thing you ate was, right? But then after a day or two, there's a pause. But if you go hard on the juices, like citrus, pineapple, beets, you'll start to see a different type of material exit your body. Your pee begins to get darker and darker because the truth is some people are not filtering as much as they, they should be. And they're actually in a shutdown type of state in which their body's not really ringing any alarms, but the kidney and liver are not really truly functioning. If one was to go on a juice fast, and this varies to person to person, but there will come a time where the body turns off your digestion and the desire for hunger. The kidneys will begin to function. The senses begin to kick in. It can be felt from within the intestines and the organs as they begin to breathe again from being clogged for so long. Many people who are dismissive of this might say that's too much sugar. It really isn't if that's like all you're having. The body thrives off of it. And it's not just that. The fruits work as an astringent for removing these toxins from your body. There really is no argument. Many have experienced the same results. There are many people who have lived primarily off of fruits and are doing just fine. Well built and they have a healthy glow. Now I will warn that this is going to reveal the diseases that have laid dormant within your body. In some cases, a juice fast could shock someone with a serious illness. Let's have the awareness to be responsible and take these things slowly. The first few steps being removing meat and adding fruit in place of processed grains, toxic fats, and refined sugar filled snacks. Okay, so back to the story. The sick finish listening to Jesus, he leaves, and they're like, what do we do now? So they get to praying and cleaning their insides and they begin to get extremely sick. They're sweating, vomiting, all this gooey stuff is coming out from all over their body, boils, and their urine becomes as thick as the honey of bees, like I was saying will happen in detox. These are our filtering systems. They're just so backed up that all the toxins that we take in are finding homes in other parts of our bodies, causing localized diseases. Okay, so they continue, they start to become miserable, and they are doubting that they can make it to the seventh day. So I'm going to begin to wrap this up. There will be a more in-depth breakdown of the Essenes in the future on this channel, but I want to finish this off with the most craziest part. So they are begging Jesus for help, but Jesus tells a story in hopes that they would learn a lesson for how they got into this state in the first place. It's basically saying that the mother will forgive you for seven years of sinning in seven days. It's 49 years and in 49 days, just letting them know to hang on tight. But they beg and plead that one man isn't going to make it. He had it the worst of everybody, and he pleads for Jesus to cast the Satan out of him. Quote, And Jesus milked an ewe, which was feeding him on the grass, and he put the milk upon the sand, made hot by the sun, saying, Lo, the power of the angel of water has entered this milk. And now the power of the angel of sunshine will enter it also. And the milk became hot by the strength of the sun. And now the angels of water and of the sun will join with the angel of air. And lo, the vapor of the hot milk began to rise slowly into the air. Come and breathe in by your mouth the strength of the angels of water, of sunshine, and of air, that it may come into your body and cast out the Satan from you. And the sick man whom Satan tormented did breathe within himself, deeply, the rising whitish vapor, Straight away will Satan leave our, your body, since for three days he starves and finds no food within you. He will come out of you to satisfy his hunger by the hot steaming milk. For his food finds favor in his sight. He will smell its smell and will not be able to resist the hunger which has tormented him three days already. But the Son of Man will destroy his body, that he may torment none else again. And the sick man's body was seized with an ache, 
and he retched as though he would vomit, but he could not, and he gasped for air, for his breast, for his breath was spent, and he fainted on the lap of Jesus. Now does Satan leave his body, see him, and Jesus pointed to the sick man the sick man's open mouth, and then they all saw with astonishment and terror that Satan was coming out from his mouth in the shape of an abominable worm, straight towards the steaming milk. Then Jesus took two sharp stones in his hand and crushed the head of Satan, and drew from out the sick man all the body of the monster, which was almost as long as the man. When the abominable worm came out of the sick man's throat, he recovered at once his breath, and then all his pains ceased, and the others looked with terror at his abominable body of Satan. So you heard that, right? Jesus pulls out a worm the size of a man's body. The thing is, is I think the people were influenced by Jesus, they felt his words, but it wasn't until they saw what was truly inside their bodies that they became shocked. It's like we know, but do we? Because I think the truth of how our bodies look on the inside, mostly because of self-indulgence, is that it's toxic, it's acidic, it's a low vibration. Okay, so that's great and all, but how do we apply this to the modern day or how am I supposed to react to this? Do I just stop eating? Do I only eat fruits? It's good to ask questions, but one must apply the law for himself. You either choose life or death and everything. As for food, Jesus recommends a very simple diet, eating no more than twice a day and fasting on the seventh day. Now remember, there is diet and then there's detox. So I don't want to confuse people. I'm not really recommending anything. I'm just sharing my personal research. I think it's important to not completely disregard all ancient writings and ideas. We are conditioned to think that the ancients are idiots who were all suffering from diseases, and that's half true, because it's clear that we've had many cycles of civilizations come and go. There are bound to be high times and low times, like an oscillating wave, yet somehow we are supposed to believe that people with tiny lifespans suffering from some plague have the time and energy to hire workers to build these massive, perfectly geometric structures. We're only told of the lowest parts of our history in order to make us think that we are bound to these behaviors. We get told that our ancestors killed in order to survive. Maybe at one point that was the case, but it doesn't have to be the case now. Our outer world reflects our inner worlds, and it's not just our minds, but our physical bodies. As within, so without. If there's a lesson to be learned, it's that we must cleanse ourselves. Whether it's mentally or physically, hopefully both, we must take part in cleaning our temple. The true reality is that in the modern day, we're treated like kings. We can eat what we want, and there's no such thing as delicacy. This has resulted in our intestines becoming numb to these illnesses. Do not think that such things don't apply to you. It will catch up to you. Either we can live our lives short, full of momentary pleasures and die, or you can live with life and have a long-lasting, fulfilling life. But you know, I truly do believe it's possible. It said that Enoch didn't even die. The angels just walked him into heaven. Sounds pretty cool. So detox. And again, I'm not telling anyone to go out and do this, but if someone asked me, this is what I would say. Let's just look at this chart. When you're on a detox, you want to avoid all meat, too much acidity, and too much on your kidneys and liver. The argument is that your liver will produce all the enzymes it needs because it has all the nutrients it needs, but this is just a blind not understanding what life means. They know that it's not a way of life, therefore it cannot lead to life. No cooked starches. If you get some starches from juicing some beets or carrots, it's fine, but potatoes, squash, any nightshades really are going to slow down the digestion process. Eggs and dairy are to be avoided, but if you eat constant meat, you know, maybe start with vegetarian and work your way down. And vegetables and greens are good for building, but not necessarily for detoxing. There are some exceptions, but you don't want to be juicing with just kale and spinach. Celery, beets, carrots, dandelion, parsley are all really good for juicing. The goal is to get the lymphatic and endocrine system working at their prime again. And my favorite juices that I like are a mixture of oranges, pineapples, watermelons, beets, apples, grapes, celery, cucumber, lemon, and any other melon really. So for the first couple days, just every time you're hungry, make a really awesome juice. Pineapple orange beets my favorite. <laughs> you won't get sick, you're not gonna die, just listen to your body, not the parasites, and do what feels right. 
If the fruit juices are making things move too fast or disrupting something you have inside of you, then just start slow, you know? Just eat fruits. I did that for a long time, like before fast, I would just eat watermelon. You'd be surprised how much watermelon can clean you. You know that's not watermelon coming out of you after five days. Either way, whatever you find is the best method for you, I'm not really in a position to be recommending anything, but what needs to be done is a detox day. We have to get rid of these blocked up toxins. Not just the mucoid plaque, but the toxins in the blood. We are filthy on the inside. How can we unveil our minds without the proper knowledge of what's going on in our bodies? Our stomach is our second brain, meaning it's connected to our mind. That is why these parasites have access to our most personal thoughts. We have jobs, we have responsibilities. Not everyone is ready for this, and that's completely fine, but life is life, and death is death. Are we vampires? Or are we beings of light that can be self-sustained? Once the cleansing is done, then the building can begin. You don't want to overdo it. Remember, we must eat no more than twice a day, and we must be more mindful of digestion in general. And from this point on, you can't cook your food. There's no life in your food if you cook it. There's no enzymes, there's no bacteria. A raw lifestyle of fruits, nuts, seeds, and vegetables is the Essene diet. Now, I want to separate myself from other raw foodists or any group out there really because it's just so polar and extreme. I think that if you were to have your own farm and you had raised animals, it would be not only safe but healthy to drink the milk of your animals, more specifically goats, and this would not re you know, require to force impregnate the goats for your milk. Jesus says that it's okay to drink the milk of animals, he tends, so it's a scene gospel proved. Okay, but what about cholesterol? Look, there's a lot of factors to consider when it comes to cholesterol, and I think science kind of overcalculates these types of things. I think what's most important is the symbiosis with nature, to create a network of bacteria, beneficial bacteria, not parasites, or in other words, the angels of life, to breed this network of healthy bacteria in your environment, and therefore creating this invisible link between all the animals you take care of and you. In this scenario, I think it would be fine on occasion to eat eggs from your own chickens that have been cooked in the sun, not scrambled, as this would be overcooked and take time to digest by the body. I'm not saying, you know, after your detox, it's good to go eat eggs and dairy from the grocery stores. No way. That's too acidic. It's processed. And plus, if the ancients lived off of just fruits, then we should ultimately work up towards that higher vibrational diet and remove the need for all acidic foods together. The idea is to eat in a way that things are not left to rot inside the body. A simple life of plenty of fruits, which really isn't simple. There are so many choices. You have nut yogurts, and then you can get into fermenting, which will bring us to another level. Um, but yeah, you know, so the sick people ask Jesus, but what about our bread? I know a lot of people question whether or not grains and gluten are something we should be eating and Probably not, but what Jesus recommends is basically a sprouted flatbread that's baked in the sun. You don't let the dough rise, so yeah. Basically, an Essene diet would be something like that. It's not just vegetarian, it's mostly a raw diet of fruits and seeds and then some animal foods for the special occasion if you are the caretaker. Same goes for honey. I know some people are like, no way, I'm going to be skinny as you if I start eating like that. But here's the thing, the diet that we've been fed our whole lives has led to malabsorption, meaning it takes us more food to grow, especially with people who have a higher metabolism. They have to eat more while being completely clogged. So the idea is once you clean yourself and rid yourself of disease, then you won't need to continually plump your blood with protein, which is what we basically do. We don't absorb enough as a species, so in order to keep the illusion of being strong and somewhat healthy, we're told to eat, eat, eat protein, but really, this is just clogging our systems. for are vegans and meat eaters. Alright, so how do you expect to keep my size and figure? Well, I mean, dude, the rock is not natural. Do you see what he has to do to keep that figure? I mean, nothing about that is natural. It's gonna catch up to him. You know, the mind does have power, and it can shape his body into any form it wants, you know? Will, mind over matter. But life is life, and death is death. And if you suffer from illness, then your body is screaming for you to open your eyes. 
if you've heard this message, maybe it has something to do with you. Sure, we can't all just go start our own farms and remove ourselves from worldly desires. Um, we live in a new world, but I have a feeling that it's not that different from Jesus' time. Now, just as a side note for people who may be new to the channel, I'm not a Christian. I don't prescribe to like any particular group. I'm just highly drawn to the occult and deep rabbit holes. One being that Jesus isn't really from that long ago, and you know, history and our whole timeline being completely altered. Um, now, whether he was called Jesus is another story. I mean, I know all about astrotheology. Um, I do believe that there was a person or people preaching the message of life. And, you know, many of his followers have written on his life. So even though many of these historical figures have been made up in the first place, I still think it stands clear that the words of wisdom has survived from the past to the modern day. And it's our duty to translate them and apply them to our modern life. Plus, I think Jesus is completely distorted and misunderstood. Um, in the Bible, you don't really get the occult side to Jesus. Uh, you don't really get an insight to those Gnostic teachings. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, basically, I'm not talking about this stuff from a normal Christian perspective. You know, I honestly think the stuff that Jesus is saying in the same Gospels is extremely occult. So occult, in fact, that most of us didn't even know about these things. He's mostly talking about spiritual realities. So. Um, I think that's basically it. Um, what really inspired me for this video is a while back is I saw this video. I, I don't know the name of the title, unfortunately, so you're going to have to forgive me and I can't find it anymore. But all I can remember is the guy who made it and his name is Christian Lee Sanderson. So he made this video about the human diet and I didn't know about the scene gospels before I, I heard this video and I, it really inspired me. It's honestly... It was a big influence on this video and a lot of changes that have happened in my life. So I'm very thankful. And if someone could help me find it, I it was easy to find. It was very easy to find, but it seems as if it's been taken down. So it's a really great video. You guys should check it out if you can find it. I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know where it's at. I don't know the link, but um, that basically wraps this up. The idea is that we must fast, cleanse our system, and then take on a diet that is aligned with the principles of life. Modern day diets such as veganism and carnivore diets are extremely misleading and unhealthy due to, due to high acidity from protein and oils. These matters can be even worse for vegans since they partake in high processed sugar intake. I'm talking about people who go to vegan fast food restaurants or eat Beyond Burger or really any vegan product is usually filled with canola oil, processed oil acids, and sugar. These diets are not the diets that were intended for man. Man was intended to be self-sufficient, but in this lower experience of matter, we have been supplied with a diet that is harmonized with life. How will we ever unveil our minds if we can't come in harmony with our bodies and Mother Nature? Thank you all for watching. We appreciate the support, and may our minds be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?